why a lot of guys will use MPP and they're afraid of DECA is they, they think it's more mellow or, or the short ester. It's not actually a short ester. It just never quite peaks the same as dendrolundicanoid. So you don't get the same side effects. No, yeah, and it was, it very... so people understand to the layout and why it takes so long. Like all the other things Steve said, a real study takes a long time to conduct. So we had to administer the doses separately. And then there was a washout period where there was no testosterone for 12 weeks because we, we don't want any overlay. We don't want like sipinate still lingering in there and then you add an anthate on top of it. Um, so it, it, it's a long extensive process. And then now we're going through all the data and then we have to translate that into something that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, and to finish up the article, and then it needs to be uh, submitted to peer reviewed and well, then published. Yeah. It, t- it takes time, man. And, it takes time. And, and not yeah. to harp on MPP, but this is kind of, the, the, this translates MPP. And so I think why a lot of guys will use MPP and they're afraid of DECA is they, they think it's more mellow or, or the short ester. It's not actually a short ester. That aromatic ring, it actually is a much bigger ester. It just never quite peaks the same as dendrolundicanoid. So you don't get the same side effects, right? If you're someone who doesn't tolerate DECA, but you tolerate MPP, that's, that's really, you're just not absorbing most of it. And yeah, it's not, get a lot and of it's dosed a lot at of hundred hearts and it's dosed at hundred milligrams per CC typically versus the 200 for NECA because the ester is so large. It's not that the base is bigger because it's a short ester. It's because the ester takes up so much space right. in that solution. So, so. so the concentration has to be lower. lower. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We're going to get a lot of broken hearts again. <laughs> yeah. Again, I'm not deterring the use of any of these things. I just think people. I think as a community, we should start to understand how these drugs work and why they are different and, you know, when and why we use certain things. The science is there to progress the sport, right? This is why we do this kind of stuff, um, bring new information to the forefront. And if that, if that makes people upset, then so be it, you know, we're, we're trying to push this, uh, this uh, field forward. And there's not so many people looking into these kinds of uh, um, drug metabolism pathways. So right, if that makes people upset, and it, it causes uh, some esters to fall off uh, the uh, popularity list, and so be it, you know, so be it. And maybe that's why people don't experience or experience less side effects with cipionate, simply because the serum concentrations it's never low. reach. Yeah. yeah, they're lower. <laughs> so, yeah, and it's good to hear that I always said that enantate is best, and that's almost proven. <laughs> uh, most. Do you know what I think, oh, I think is, as well as... Um, Cipionate tends to be the one that is quite often um, anecdotally um, reported as having a higher instance of post-injection pain. And if you think about it, what Kurt's results are showing is that depot of drug is sitting there for longer because of its, the, the ester isn't able to remove it and bring the parent compound into circulation. So... Yeah. The, the fact that we see guys saying, oh, well, SIP tends to cause massive amounts of irritation. It's probably because the, the drug's residency time in the muscle is uh, probably uh, it's probably slightly longer than an antate, and it then it irritates the tissue by not being brought into systemic circulation quicker. Which is so, funny because yeah. the original introduction of an antate was, or the original introduction of sipinate was, they claim that an antate hurt. So they were they were trying to come up with an ester that didn't. In fact, they invented something that hurt worse. <laughs> Potentially. Yeah, and Terry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Same as same as with uh, sustenone, right? Some people have an absolutely amazing response, and then other guys don't respond well to it because you have four different esters. Yeah. And some of them metabolize faster than others. Um, well, the the failure know. with the again, all these drugs that were into the fifties, they just didn't have the chemistry knowledge that they do now. So the the really the failure with sustenon is the original thought process is that they would all release at different points, and you would you would just have this. The problem is they all release almost the same time, so you get this massive peak, and then they slowly drop off. But you you're getting too much of a spike in the beginning, and then yeah. not enough of a proper treatment. So it doesn't hold. So sustenon could be a good drug, but you probably have to inject it every other day just to keep it stable. So to me, that mm-hmm. seems like a pointless thing. There's no, I think people like things that are new and shiny and fancy. So there's always some like a lore cause it's a blend, right? Like guys will buy things that are a blend cause they think they're getting Ooh. more or something, even though a single ester would do just fine. Yeah. Especially if you inject every day, then it kind of doesn't matter. Yeah, then only that the carrier oil matters because carrier oils metabolize differently from the injection depot. And that affects the half-life too. And that actually has been studied comparing, uh, comparing tea oil or peach oil and castor oil, for example, or sesame oil. And then you see that the half-lives and, and the, the lingering time and the lag time 
is different as well uh, between the release of testosterone anatide to increasing serum testosterone levels without the ester. Um, that all differs. So in the end, I would just go with something that works. And if scientifically you can prove that cypionate works less favorably than anatide, you know, we can, you know, pivot some people into anatide ester, which of course in China, they'll be happy with that because they can sell more anatide raws. Or they can <laughs> put a big shortage on it like everything Yeah, else. yeah, artificial say, shortage. Add that to the master on Primo out of our yeah, list. No yeah, yeah, and add testosterone anatide. <laughs> And a cypionate will be like, super yeah, cheap. just have cypionate. Yeah. <laughs> That's I'll be on a 50, permanent 50% discount. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this was pretty much the topics I had in mind. Uh, Dean, you have, you have something you, you really want to discuss? No, no I was just going to say that then we'll just have to go on a trademark testosterone butyrate or something like that. To <laughs> ah, <the> market yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny. If you go to Wikipedia, you see like an index of all the esters that testosterone has been produced in. And it's the most funny esters. There's even um, like uh, DMZ, like Superdrol being mm -hmm. attached to each other, right? There was also testosterone that's bound with an ester and then two testosterone molecules on the outside. So percentage-wise, it's, it's a much larger amount of testosterone compared to the ester because the ester binds two testosterone molecules. So maybe maybe we can bring that to the markets. That will be the that new and exciting world, ester. Yeah. yeah, that can be the new trend. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's interesting. I mean, that's sort of probably where you know when results like this comes out, then there's more uh, questions on. Well, and better drug delivery of testosterone is probably more favorably suited to shorter chain esters. And before you know it, we're like going to testosterone acetate for yeah, <laughs> fast delivery of TRT or yeah. suspension. Uh, oh, you'd that, be surprised. You, know, yeah. you have to go to the doctor every 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 or you go with the patches and then cream becomes more popular, right? Yeah. I would just yeah. might as well do t uh, testosterone cream on the nutsack yeah. for the most stable <laughs> levels, you know, and then meanwhile you're, you know, pollinating everybody else in your household. Yeah. yeah. With testosterone. <laughs> Why am I? Why is my cat so muscular? Why am I? Why does my cat have a beard? <laughs> testosterone cream, baby. Oh man, yeah, I'm excited for that study. So, what, what do you think is the the publication time? Like, you're you're submitting it to the NHA next month, yeah. And then how long so do you within think? Within a month or two. Okay. Should go fast after that. It would be good if we can do that for the one year anniversary of this podcast, and it's, otherwise we'll do yeah, it on the third thirteenth episode. Well, because it's not using any new drug, right? There's no there's no like interest in it per se that it's going to hold mm. it up, right? No right. one's going to, no pharmaceutical company is going to rush out to like invest in something and hold it up. So no, no one. Well, knows. Pfizer might want to hold Pfizer it up. Pfizer might care, but I mean, <laughs> it was invented in 1952. I don't know if they really care that much. Mm, I don't know what their sales are. I remember when uh, they, they pushed out the vax, then all the ampules or the vials were used for the vax. And yep. then there were no ampules or vials available for testosterone cypionate. And then they produced in one milliliter or two milliliter vials for a while, um, which they got off China uh, that they usually use for the peptide mm -hmm. companies. Like that, that was like for a year almost. Test sip was found in, in those one milliliter, two milliliter uh, generic vials. Yep. It was hilarious. Um, so yeah, so, so maybe they will care. Or maybe we'll pull it off the market, like uh, other formulations, like Oxandrolone. And, um, you know, I saw that Ellie Lilly was suing uh, some compounding pharmacies for terzepidate. Um, yeah, compounded with uh, vitamin B12 or, or that kind of stuff. I'll link that article down below. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, you never know with these pharmaceutical companies, man. They, they might be after to get you. So if you disappear at one point, then we know which study did you in. <laughs> <laughs> never uh, seen you 